In this video, we're going to use a while loop to validate that data is within a specific range for our driver program. I'm using a new flow charting software this time, Draw.io, and I'm just going to save it to my Google Drive. So we'll call this one uh, while loop validation. Okay, so while loop validation is going to work pretty easily. We, we have our standard shapes here. We'll go ahead and use the ellipse as kind of a start, although really, really we're going to do this in a uh, in a module, so we could we could use a separate module for it, but let's go ahead and just we'll do like so. So, okay, that works. We'll say start. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we are going to prompt the user for a number. Okay, prompt user for a number. There we go. And we are going to ask if it's within a valid range. Okay, is the number within a valid range? Okay. If so, then we're just going to return. So I'll just take a I'll just take another ellipsis here, and we'll just say end or really return because we're going to be doing this in a separate method. Uh, so now let's draw some lines. Okay. You see this tool? Honestly, I hadn't even opened it before looking at before creating this video, and you see it's very much like Visio. Uh, very easy to put together a very simple diagram. So we'll say yes, it's a valid number, and now let's get a flow out here for no, and I'll simply borrow the line and we'll take it up just and plop it just right there. But let me grab the, let's make this clear where it's coming from. Okay, just a moment, let me drag that down. And there we go. Okay, and this will be the no path. Okay, no longer need this guy. So you see what we have here, there we go. You see what we have here is a very simple flow, but it is a true while loop because you see we're making a decision and one output from that decision will take us to the end or the return. Another output from the decision will take us back to the same prompt again. So we're going to continue to prompt while the number is not valid. This method, we are going to extract from what we've already created. So I'm going to run back to our vehicles program. And let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at driver. So in driver... If I expand this, we're going to see that our prompt user method is starting to get fairly long. And when a method gets long like this, we want to say, gosh, are there any opportunities for refactoring? In other words, is there any duplicate logic that we can consolidate into one method? And if you take a look at our prompts, let's see, here's an int and here's an int prompt. You see it's essentially following the same pattern where we're saying, okay, ask for a value, then convert it to an int, and we're not even putting any validation in for it yet. So let's refactor this a bit. If I highlight this, and I right-click, and I say introduce, we'll say refactor, and then we'll say introduce, and then method, it's going to take the lines I've highlighted, move them into a method, and replace the lines I've highlighted with a call to that method. Fortunately, it's smart enough to figure out some of the parameters we're going to need for the method as well. So I'm going to say prompt for integer. That's going to be my method. And we'll say, OK. OK, int odometer equals prompt for integer. The only thing is there are three parameters I want to pass in here. One is going to be a message. Another is going to be a low range. And then the final one will be a high range. So let's take a look at the method that was created. You see prompt for integer. OK, let me change this method signature to say string message, comma int low, int high. So low and high are going to represent the uh, appropriate range for our integer. The message is this thing I've highlighted here. And you see, to make this method more reusable, uh, I'm going to make this a parameter instead of a string constant. In other words, I don't want it to, say, to show interodometer every time I call it. I want the message to be customizable, which is why I'm passing it in right here. So I'm going to control X and I'm simply going to say message. Okay, let's go back up to this method call, and now what's the message? In this case, it's going to be interodometer. We still need a low value. Now, an, an odometer is not going to be less than zero, and we also need a high value. Probably one million is a good high value for an odometer. It's unlikely that you're going to uh, go beyond one million. I've certainly seen half a million when I was in taxi cabs uh, in Mexico before. And, and trucks and things like that can certainly get very high. But you see, now we've replaced two lines with one line. That doesn't seem like a very significant savings, but consider this. 
we can consolidate these two lines by calling that method as well. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this line. So you see we've removed one line so far. And I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to replace it with our method call to prompt for integer. And the difference now is the message is going to be miles per gallon. Now miles per gallon isn't going to be less than zero and it's probably not going to be greater than 100. And we'll terminate with the semicolon. So you see now we're calling the method twice, distance to travel and miles per gallon. And uh, we could possibly do something with gallons of gas, but that's a double. Let's leave that one aside for the moment. I'm going to set a breakpoint here because I know we're going to want to watch this one work. So I'll snap a breakpoint there. Now let's continue with our method. Our method is prompting the user for input, and then we're parsing. Uh, so let me just say here, prompt for input. Okay. Return the validated number. Okay, also, before continuing, one thing that we always want to do is add javadoc to the top of the method. To be honest, in practice, javadoc is more important than these inline comments. It's going to follow the syntax slash star star, and then if we just hit enter, it's going to finish off with the rest of the uh, javadoc template. So first, the first line is very important. It's where we describe the method. So we say uh, prompt and return an integer, validate that it is within a given range. Okay, message. Okay, the message to show when prompting the user. See, what we're doing here is these things that start with that param are the parameters that are getting passed into our method. Okay, low, the lowest possible acceptable value for this integer. Okay, high, the highest possible acceptable value for this integer. Okay, return the validated integer. Okay, uh, throws number format exception when non-numeric data are entered. We can solve for this as well, but that's not the focus of this video. This video, we just want to look at loops. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, uh, first of all, let's think, what is a valid number? A valid number is greater than or equal to the low, less than or equal to the high. So I could say, uh, let's see, we're parsing it right here into int odometer. And you know what? Um, let's make these names more generic because this could be odometer, could be miles per gallon, could be age, date of birth, year of birth, anything like that. So let's just call it str input and int input. Okay, and we're going to return int input. Okay, now let's think about that valid, oops, one more to change, str input. Let's think about that validation again. Okay, let's say um, int input is greater than low and uh, let's say greater than or equal to and int input is less than or equal to high. So this test, if this test passes, our number is valid. It's greater than or equal to low, and it's less than or equal to high. Remember with an and operator, both operations have to return true. So what I want to do, though, is actually the opposite of this. I want to loop and prompt for the input again if the input is not valid. So I can easily negate that by adding the exclamation to the beginning of this statement, which basically just, if it's false, it makes it true and vice versa. So I know it's a lot of symbols, but just realize this. The part in blue will return true if it's a valid number, okay? The exclamation will negate that and make it false if it's a valid number, okay? Now remember the rule with loops a loop will continue to execute until the test returns false. So, in other words, this, is going, this entire block is going to return true while the number is invalid. It's going to return false once the number is valid. So let me add a while clause here, while, and then like so, and then we'll do, uh, we'll make a block. So open curly, whoops, open curly and close curly, okay. 
And what I can do is now I can say, uh, we'll say string, uh, the number you have entered, but let me give it, sorry, variable name, string message equals the number you've entered is not in the valid range. Low, okay, and then plus, and then we'll say low, and then plus, and then high, and then plus, and we'll say high. So what we'll say it's not within the valid range, and then it will tell what the valid range is. Now it's mad at me because I've already used the name message, so I cannot redeclare it. Let's and what what error do we get when we see that variable message is already defined? Okay, let's call this error message then. Uh, and let's also add plus, and then we'll say please try again. Okay, now I'm going to say just like we have up above, J option pane show input dialog. I'm going to borrow a little bit of this. Okay. And then we're going to say, okay, we're going to parse it again. Just like so. Okay. And let me change that from message to error message. Okay. Uh, I also have to take away these final keywords. Finals mean, final means once, uh, once initialized, a variable cannot be reassigned. And you see down here, I'm reassigning the variable. Now let's think through this for a bit. What's going to happen? Let's say I put negative 40 as an odometer. Negative 40 is not greater than or equal to low. So this will return false. So the entire test will return false. But then the exclamation reverts that, makes it true. A while loop will execute its block as long as it's true. We'll get this message. We'll be prompted for new input. We'll put in new input. Now let's say I put in an, uh, an obscene number like 10 million. 10 million is not less than or equal to high. So this will return false, which means the whole test returns false, the whole and test. The exclamation negates it, turns it true. And then the while loop is going to execute again because the test evaluates to true. So, okay, uh, third time around, let's say I put in a reasonable number like 10. 10 is greater than or equal to low or less than or equal to high. So the inner test returns true, the exclamation negates it, it makes it false, the while loop stops executing, and then we end up returning the valid input. I'll snap a breakpoint here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, save and debug. Okay, the program is now debugging. Remember F8 means execute this line, move to the next. F8, execute this line, move to the next. We'll keep stepping over this until we get to our first breakpoint. So here's our first breakpoint, enter gallons of gas. I'll do a little tabbing and see if I can get that box to come up because sometimes it hides. And sure enough, here's our prompt. Gallons of gas were not validating. I'll put uh, 20. That's kind of high, isn't it? But uh, we'll go ahead and keep stepping over until we find one that we're validating. Okay, enter miles per gallon. Now take a look at this one. Do you see that this one has our new construction where we are delegating to a new method called prompt for integer? Also notice that we have an assignment statement here, and the assignment means execute this method, take the return value, store it into this variable. So let's go ahead, instead of F8, let's choose F7, which is going to step into that method. So F7, and here we go. Okay, now we're going to get our dialog box, enter miles per gallon. Let's put on an invalid number like negative 9. Okay, so F8 and we see it parses properly. Now I'm going to choose F8 again, and remember that negative 9 is not going to be greater than or equal to low, so this will return false, which means the entire and will return false. The exclamation negates it, turns it true, and that's what the while cares about, what the final result is of the entire equation, including the negation. So I choose F8, and we should see it prompt us again. Sure enough, it's prompted us again. It says the number you've entered is not in the valid range. Let's go ahead and make it invalid on the high side now with 110. I choose OK, and watch what happens. I choose F8, and it goes back to the top of the while loop to, uh, to evaluate the test again. Now, one of the things I like the, about the debugger is the ab uh, uh, ability to see the value of variables that are currently running. So if we take a look, we see int input now is 110. 110 is going to be greater than high, which is 100. 
it's not going to be less than or equal to high. So this method is going to run one more time at least, and it's going to prompt me for input again. Okay, the number you have entered is not in the valid range. Please try again. I probably ought to put the message in there also so we know which number we're prompting for. But let's see, this is miles per gallon. Let's go ahead and say 25, and let's watch it execute now. Okay, I choose FE. It's going to run the test again, but this time we have a number that's greater than or equal to low, so that's true. Less than or equal to high, so that's true as well. The exclamation negates the true, turns it to false. The while loop will stop, and it's going to return our now validated number. So watch when I hit F8. It's not going to run the while loop again. Instead, it jumps down to the return statement. We take this number, which is 25. Let's just verify down here. Yep, it's 25. We take this number, I choose F8 one more time, and it's going to assign this number to the, to the variable in the back in the prompt user method. It's going to assign it to the variable in miles per gallon. Let's try this one more time, but this time with odometer. So once again, F7 to step in, uh, enter odometer. Let's say I make an invalid number like minus nine. Okay, I'll go through this a little more quickly since we've seen it before. We see this time, we have the number you have entered is not in the valid range, but now we have a different high number because this is odometer, not, mal not miles per gallon. So you see the high number here is a much higher number. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter a valid number for odometer, let's say 10,000, and choose OK, and now F8. Okay, and now the number that we entered is greater than or equal to low, less than or equal to high. Both of these will pass and be true. The negation operator makes it false. Because it's false, it's now going to finish the while loop, and it's going to return our valid data back to the calling method, which is prompt user. We can continue to F8 through distance to travel, uh, let's say 100. Uh, we can continue to F8 through, or alternatively, we can go to F5, which just says, OK, continue to run the program as normal now. If I run back to the console, we'll see my vehicle started with gallons of gas 20 and odometer 10,000. After running 100 miles at 25 miles per gallon, we consumed four gallons of gas, which is not a surprise. So that takes us to 16,000 gallons, and our odometer has incre increased by 10,100. So at this point, we've used a loop to validate the range of data. There is one more thing that we can do that we haven't talked about yet, uh, and that is what if the user enters data that's not even numbers? For that, what we would want to do is we'd want to do a try catch. I'm just going to put it here but not explain it yet because we haven't gotten the catches. Uh, we haven't gotten a try catch. Number format exception E. Okay, so essentially what happens in this case is if the user enters non numeric data, we end up here. Okay. Um, I missed one thing, and that is the word catch. We need a, a catch to go with a try. So basically, what we could do is we could do another loop. We could loop it around this try catch, and we could put some signal in here that, hey, the user's entered invalid data. But since we haven't talked about exceptions yet, I'm going to take that out, and I will leave that as an exercise for you to try. But that will allow us to have full validation. Uh, number one, validation that we have numeric data. That's what the try catch would do. And number two, validation that that numeric data is within a given range. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, example of loops. I'll tell you one other thing that we could add is, is like a get out of jail card. If the user mistakenly got in here, or if our low and high are somehow mixed up, we might want to give the user an option to cancel out and say, I don't want to enter this, let's go back. So we should probably do that because otherwise we end up with an infinite loop scenario if the user never enters valid data. But uh, we'll hold that for a different video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll see a few other videos in loops using do while, using for, and for each. I look forward to seeing you then.